Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the chapter States of Matter. We have now understood that the state of a substance depends on two things, the intermolecular forces and thermal energy. In this video, I'm going to talk about the intermolecular forces. There are two types of intermolecular forces, forces of attraction and forces of repulsion. The forces of attraction are also called by the name of van der Waals forces. We have studied in chemical bonding that when two atoms combine by a covalent bond, that is also a, there is a force of attraction which brings the two atoms together and therefore there is an attraction which keeps the uh, atoms of the molecules together. And there is a force of attraction between Coulombic force of attraction between those substances which are bound by an electrovalent bond too. But these are proper bonds. Besides these proper bonds, that is the covalent and the ionic or the coordinate bonds, in addition to these, there still are forces of attraction and repulsion experienced by molecules. And these forces, which are other than the forces that are holding bonds together or the forces of chemical bonds, these forces are called the van der Waals forces. The van der Waals forces are existent between any two molecules that may come close, any two substances, whether they are bound or not. The van der Waals forces always exist between them. If they come, they will not be apparent if the distance is too large. But as the distance between molecules reduces, at certain point, the forces of attraction and repulsion, they come into play. So what are these different types of uh, forces? I told you the intermolecular forces could be forces of attraction and they could be forces of repulsion. The forces of attraction that are called the van der Waals forces, the first type of force of attraction is known as the dispersion force or the London force. London force, dispersion force. There are four types of intermolecular attractive forces which are other than the chemical bonds. And the first one here is the dispersion force or the London force. If you have two molecules which are neutral, there is no polarity in the molecules. We find that these are two molecules A and B and they are non-polar in nature. And we are also aware that electrons in molecules or atoms are constantly vibrating and their motion is like that, those of bees, you know, they are constantly moving. And when they are constantly moving, there comes an instant, just for an instant, th there is a possibility that the positive charge in the neutral molecule comes on one side and in that particular instant, the negative charge, it goes to the other side. There is a possibility that for just for an instant, when the bees were buzzing, the electrons were buzzing like bees, all of the electrons, they partially went to one side and one side of the molecule became partially positive because the electrons have moved to one side. When such a thing happens, we say an instantaneous dipole is created. The molecule was non-polar, yet an instantaneous dipole is created in it. Just for an instant, it acted as a polar molecule because of the movement of electrons. And such, such a dipole that is instantaneous dipole that is created is known as a temporary dipole. This dipole is not permanent. The molecule is very much neutral. It is not polar, but for an instant, a, a polarity was created due to the movement of electrons. But whenever anything happens, it has a consequence. So when a dipole is created in one of the molecules, the positive charge has come to this side and let us say the negative charge is on this side. The moment this happens, this negative charge, it starts and the positive charge there, it starts affecting the adjacent molecules, right? If they are molecules of the same substance, another molecule B is present here, this is, and B was also non-polar, but this instantaneous dipole, what effect did it have on its neighbor B? If the negative charge came here, what will it do? It will start attracting the positive charge of the neighboring molecule. And when it does that, 
it'll it'll attract the positive charge of the neighboring molecule at the same time repelling the negative charge of that molecule so as a result the negative charge of the adjacent molecule gets pushed to the other side and a, a temporary dipole is created in the neighboring molecule too such forces which are created so, and now the negative of this attracting the positive of this the negative of this would be attracting the positive of the adjacent molecule the positive of this would be attracting the negative of the other molecule and this kind of an attraction that comes into play is known as the London dispersion force so what are dispersion forces or London forces they are forces which of attraction which exist between induced dipole and induced dipole both the dipoles were induced the molecule by itself was non-polar but the induced both the and remember when there is an induced dipole it's only momentary it is a very weak force it's not like the force between uh, two polar molecules or ions attracting each other it's a very minor force they say the force this force it is proportional to the reciprocal that is 1 upon r to the power 6 sixth power of the distance between the two molecules right it is 1 upon r to the power 6 where r is the distance between the two molecules then these forces of attraction are proportional to 1 upon r to the power 6 the london dispersion forces are called london dispersion forces because of a german physicist fritz london after whom these were named the second type of forces of attraction, I'm discussing forces of attraction here, or Van der Waals force, is the dipole-dipole forces. Now, we know that in induced dipole, induced dipole, both the molecules were non-polar and the dipoles were induced, they were temporary. But here in dipole-dipole, both the molecules are permanent dipoles. They already are polar molecules and these polar molecules, the positive of what is a polar molecule? A molecule which is uh, in which there are covalent bonds and due to the electronegativity difference of the two atoms, one is positive, acquires a partial positive charge and the other acquires a partial negative. Why do I say partial? If there was even one electron, let us say the charge of one electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. If the charge difference is this much it means that one electron has shifted completely from one atom to the other and they are ions they are not dipoles in that sense that they are covalently bound if the charge difference is so much it means one electron has been transferred but when the charge difference is not equal to the charge of one electron why do we say one electron because that is the minimum possible charge unit charge the minimum unit of charge, single negative charge would be equal to how many coulombs? 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. When the charge difference is less than this, yet polarity is created due to this charge difference, we call it a partial <coughs> positive, um, excuse me, <coughs> partial positive and a partial negative charge. So these dipoles, they also attract each other. So such an attraction such van der Waals forces of attraction are known as dipole dipole forces and these are between permanent dipoles so these would definitely be stronger than the instantaneous ones where the uh, dipole was induced only for an instant now when the dipoles that is the dipoles are stationary at that time these forces are proportional to are a thousand times more than this do you see one upon r cube these are one upon proportional to one upon r cube but if these dipoles are not stationary they are rotating then the force of attraction is proportional to one upon r to the power six just as the induced dipoles stationary dipoles would be stubborn dipoles they are just Stationary, there's no movement. In that case, it would be one to one upon r to the power three, which means it would be considerably larger. But if the dipole is moving, it is rotating, then that motion is going to cause is going to weaken the dipole. And therefore, again, there the force would be proportional to one upon r to the power six. 
So the next type of force of attraction is where you have one molecule is a dipole, a permanent dipole, and the other is an induced dipole. So dipole induced dipole forces. You have a permanent dipole like HCl, and you have another molecule which is non-polar. When an induced dipole can make the neighbor polarized can polarize its neighbor simply by by being a little polar due to uh, for an instant if even that can create a dipole in the neighboring molecule you can imagine that when a molecule is permanent is a permanent dipole it has positive and negative charge separation it would very it would definitely create some charge separation in the neighboring molecules even if they are nonpolar in nature so the positive of this molecule which is a permanent dipole if it comes close to this nonpolar molecule or is close to this nonpolar molecule it would create a dipole it would start attracting the electrons of this nonpolar molecule and since those electrons would be attracted to the positive they will start moving to this side and a dipole will be induced in the nonpolar molecule by the permanent dipole so such forces of attraction are called dipole induced dipole forces again they are the magnitude of these forces is proportional to 1 upon r to the power 6 and the fourth kind of uh, dipole this this is again uh, an attraction between permanent dipoles but we do not study it under this dipole dipole forces because this is an extreme a hydrogen bond as I studied as I taught you in the previous chapter that is chemical bonding in molecular structure we discussed the hydrogen bond in details and I told you that hydrogen which is the most electropositive non-metal when it forms bonds with fluorine oxygen or nitrogen which are the most electronegative elements then the molecule that is formed has a great uh, difference in the magnitude of the positive and the negative charge separation. It is certainly not equal to single negative charge or single positive charge because there is no transfer of electrons. The bond is very much covalent but the electronegativity difference is large enough. It is so large that the attraction that it experiences with the other uh, molecule that is the electronegative atom of one molecule for example you have HF it attracts the hydrogen, the electropositive hydrogen of the adjacent molecule. The electronegative atom of one would attract the, the hydrogen of the next molecule. Such a hydrogen bond is known as an intermolecular hydrogen bond. You have it in HF molecule, you have it in H2O. In H2O, oxygen is electronegative, it attracts the hydrogen of the adjacent molecule. A hydrogen bond is shown by a dotted line. And the reason why we call it a bond is that it is quite strong. It is, it is not as strong as a covalent bond or an ionic bond, but it is strong enough to be called a bond. We don't call it just a force, a force of attraction. It is very much a Van der Waals force, but since the magnitude of the force is much larger, we call it a bond. And hydrogen bonds have their own, um, you know, there is an energy, um, the bond enthalpy. You require a certain amount of energy to break the hydrogen bond. While in the case of these dipoles, the amount of energy to remove these, um, uh, to r remove the attraction is not so high. So similarly, in NH3 also, we have the hydrogen bond, where nitrogen of one molecule is attract, forms a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of the adjacent molecule. So these were the four types of forces of attraction between molecules. But when we are discussing the intermolecular forces, you don't have just the forces of attraction, you have forces of repulsion too. So what are these forces of repulsion due to? The forces of repulsion would be when you have two molecules which are coming closer. What is going to happen? Molecules have positively charged nuclei and they have negatively charged electrons. So as the molecules come close, the electrons of one molecule will start repelling the electrons of the adjacent molecule. So and at the same time, the nuclei of one molecule should repel the nuclei of the other molecule because they are positively charged 
Since like charges repel each other, we find that electrons of one molecule repel the electrons of adjacent molecules and the nuclei of molecules, they repel the nuclei of other molecules. So it is a balance between the two that it is when the forces of attraction are greater than the forces of repulsion. That is when molecules come close and stay together. How is this significant for the states of matter? In the case of gases, the repulsive forces are very high and therefore the molecules do not come that close, right? The forces they, and the forces of attraction in those cases is also very, very low and that's why they are, the molecules are free to move about and you get the gaseous state. But in the solid and liquid states, the forces of attraction are also high and at the same time, as the molecules come closer, Remember, as the molecules come closer, not only are the forces of attraction high, the forces of repulsion go on rising too. Because as electrons come closer, the electrons will repel the other electrons. As the nuclei are coming closer, the nucleus is going to repel the other nucleus. So as the molecules come closer, the forces of repulsion also increase. And that is the reason why in the liquid state and solid state, compression is not possible. They already are present so close to each other and uh, they have struck a balance between the attractive and repulsive forces and if you try to squeeze them, the molecules further together, it's not possible. So this balance between the forces of attraction and repulsive forces explains why the solids and liquids are not compressible. So these were the intermolecular forces. The thermal energy, I already discussed with you that the energy, the average kinetic energy of molecules is the thermal energy. In the gaseous state, the thermal energy of molecules is the highest and in the solid state, the energy of the molecules is the least. So if you want to convert a solid into a gas, you have to heat it up. And when you heat it, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases and that results in the movement of molecules. And when they move, they first turn into liquids. And then because solids are rigid, they have uh, atoms or molecules which have fixed positions. And when you heat it up, energy increases and they start moving, turns into a liquid, heat it up still further and the molecules start breaking free of the surface of the liquid, forming a gas. So these were intermolecular forces. Now in the next video we are going to start studying about the gaseous state. If you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.